Hi my gorgeous friends, what a beautiful day it is here in Sydney. I'm sitting by Narrabeen Lake and it's absolutely peaceful and stunning. So why am I doing this quick uh, blog or vlog? is because it's been a very very sad week uh, of course we've lost the queen and there was the magnificent uh, state funeral yesterday uh, so september will not only be remembered by the Se september 11 all those years ago of the twin tower destructions uh, but also by the new orleans um, if you remember the uh, flash flooding that took place from Hurricane uh, Katrina. Uh, but also, um, uh, this week has been an incredibly sad week uh, for me as a Persian um, a Iranian background uh, person <laughs> who lives in Sydney now. Um, and uh, I just dyed my roots just now so excuse the wet hair and the bad hair look uh, but um, anyway um, just uh, letting my hair uh, dry uh, in fresh air uh, reminds me of the sorrow that I've been feeling this week uh, for the news of the loss of a 22 year old beautiful uh, Persian uh, lady in uh, Tehran and so I just want uh, to dedicate a uh, quick uh, vlog uh, to this beautiful soul her name was Mahsa Amini uh, through no fault of her own uh, was visiting uh, Tehran with her family but came to her death while on holiday so the background is that she was of uh, Kurdish uh, origin so coming from uh, the um, I think um, uh, another part of town visiting Tehran with her brother and father um, and she's stopped by the hijab police on the street um, and they said uh, uh, we need to arrest you and have a chat with you uh, for the um, the way you're wearing your hijab or not wearing it um, and uh, she's taken uh, by the hijab car uh, into the um, police station and um, that's where she comes to her death. Now there are lots of rumors that uh, she was crying in a state of panic um, and the head of um, the guy, the chieftain that uh, uh, was disturbed by her crying and screaming uh, comes out and uh, uh, tells her to be quiet. She's still sobbing away wanting her brother and father to be there with her. Um, instead he um, thumps um, uh, with his fist um, her head to quieten her. It's such a massive blow that she's thrown into the ground um, and um, goes unconscious immediately into a coma with blood coming out of her ear. Uh, and uh, these women who are the hijab police screaming, um, he, she's um, she's unconscious we can't wake her up um, and they don't have the courtesy to call her brother or her father uh, they throw her out of the building her brother finds her um, and uh, begs for her to be taken to the hospital um, and there's another rumor that uh, she was taken to hospital by ambulance and um, uh, only afterwards where uh, her brother and father informed so um, whatever the reason is whatever happened uh, she died and she died from this attack this brutal attack um, I mean what what can you blame a lovely 22 year old a woman for who has her whole life ahead of her uh, such a beautiful soul just a visitor in Tehran and she was actually wearing the hijab uh, she was wearing a headscarf so uh, but uh, 
maybe it was just not good enough uh, or maybe she was just another soul another excuse for them to arrest someone just to show the public every now and then that if you don't wear your hijab properly we're watching you um, anyway so uh, the injustice of the loss of beautiful Mahsa Amini just makes my heart bleed it just makes me so sad uh, it's just unforgivable, absolutely unforgivable. Um, I've got a daughter of my own, she's 27, beautiful girl, and it could have been her. Um, so it's just too sad. And that's another reason why I don't live in Iran, because my religious faith and my belief is that women and men are equal. And if you want to wear a headscarf, that's absolutely fine. Um, and however you should not be forced to wearing one um, it should come from your heart uh, what you wear on your head um, and um, to think that women have no value in certain parts of the world uh, that they're dictated to uh, to be wearing um, hijab or a certain um, head scarves in a certain way um, it's just um, unfair uh, so it's been a very very sad 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 week for me uh, I just can't get uh, Massa Amini out of my head uh, it's been very very um, very thought-provoking for me um, and um, I'll, I did a previous vlog on the killing of um, Baha'is and imprisoning of Baha'is and the confiscation of their homes, um, which is so unfair um, and against human rights. But uh, also now uh, we are reminded that they, they don't just um, single out peoples of certain religions uh, in those countries uh, women are also under huge huge uh, uh, oppression and um, so let's just take a few minutes uh, of quiet and remembering this beautiful soul Mahsa Amini I think if I stayed quiet and said nothing I wouldn't be able to live uh, with my own conscience especially that she's a daughter of Iran uh, she comes from the same uh, country that the famous Atusa who was the uh, daughter of Cyrus the Great and the wife of Darius um, the mother of Xerxes I wonder what Atusa would think our princess of old of ancient Persia what would the beautiful poetess Tyre think, who was the first woman to take her veil off um, in the um, late 1800s and um, went to her death because of it? Um, it's just too sad, really. Um, too many people are losing their lives for no reason. You know, um, she was. Um, hit by a huge fist, a big guy's fist in the, um, in her head. Uh, the MRI and the scans show fracture of the skull, uh, which caused a, a big hematoma to fill up in her brain. And um, she had cerebral hemorrhage and uh, there was blood coming out of her ear. So, um, but the government has tried to say that she had a heart attack or a stroke and that was the cause of death. So they're really covering up uh, that, uh, this daylight murder, uh, which is unforgivable. Uh, so the Baha'is of Iran, the women of Iran will always be in my thoughts and in my prayers. Um, and this is a very special uh, blog uh, just dedicated to the lovely Mahsa Amini. Uh, may she rest in peace forever. I think she's, a, she's a, got the status of a martyr, uh, I think. Um, a proof uh, that women are under oppression still in many countries and we are in the 21st century. Um, so all I can do, my hands are tied behind my back, there is nothing I can do but to pray and um, 
that's all we can do. Um, a lot of uh, women in Iran um, took their veils off and were burning them um, as a sign of protest. Uh, now, this um, is a sign that even the Iranians, even the people of that country are unhappy. And there are, of course, uh, women uh, in um, other parts of the Middle East, um, uh, in Afghanistan, who are under oppression by the Taliban, who have acid thrown on their faces. Um, there were up to recently women being circumcised in um, um, parts of Africa. So um, I'm not a woman activist, um, I'm not an activist of any sort, I'm just an ordinary human being who uh, has uh, her roots in the Middle East uh, and um, I just feel for uh, my fellow uh, women uh, the day that um, uh, they were made to cover their hair was a significant uh, sort of um, going back uh, for humanity. Um, to have that imposed on women is absolutely unforgivable. That's why I can't bear to see um, photos and pictures of women going around with their hijabs and headscarves. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to go on forever, uh, but knowing that they were for, forced to do it. Um, you go elsewhere in the world and women wear the hijab because they want to. And that's absolutely beautiful. And they wear it so beautifully. There's absolutely nothing wrong with covering your hair if that's what you want to do, if that's your belief. I fully respect that and I think that's absolutely gorgeous. But um, knowing that uh, people in this particular part of the world are forced to wear the hijab, that's a different matter. Uh, so um, this is a country where freedom of rights, freedom of speech by Cyrus the Great was the first uh, court of human rights uh, was produced there. And yet you see every uh, form of um, human right is being walked upon. Uh, it's quite unforgivable really. Um, I feel very lucky that I was able to leave that part of the world and um, I was brought up in Great Britain uh, and now I'm living in Australia where which are both secular countries people are free to practice their own religions um, within a peaceful uh, environment um, so non-violent um, living um, I love it and I feel very lucky uh, so uh, God bless you all um, and uh, I'm going to stay here a bit longer uh, and enjoy the peace uh, and just pray say a prayer for uh, lovely Mahsa uh, Amini let's hope that it's the last um, murder of its kind and let's uh, hope that there are better days ahead for our fellow uh, women in those uh, countries.